right, folks, this is Akisha Haid, the Trini Chef. We're going to start with a pork griot. So one of the things with this particular recipe, it's a multiple stage recipe. So for the pork, I'm using a pork shoulder, but I also use some pork belly. I like mixing it because the pork belly has a little bit more fat along with the pork shoulder. So once you cook them together, the, the fat from the belly also helps to coat um, the shoulder so that when you fry it, it's, it's much more tender and juicy. So. For this dish in particular, there's a two-step cooking process. The first thing is you season your pork. Um, I had my pork seasoned last night, so I wanna make sure it has some flavor to it before I do the first step. What did I season it with? I use green seasoning or grind seasoning. If you're Haitian, you're gonna use the term epis, is the way they say it, but all it is is um, a blend of herbs and spices such as hot peppers, scallions, um, it could be cilantro or cacao, um, and, and different herbs and spices. So it's really kind of what we call the base um, of a lot of our dishes or flavor profiles. So I use that, a little bit of sazon, some adobo, salt, pepper. I did not have any bitter orange, um, so I used a combination of lime juice and tangerine juice because I had the tangerines we're in quarantine don't forget so I had those on the table so I figured I'll mix my tangerines and my limes and it actually gives it a really nice citrus flavor um, as well as the acidity from the lime so I mix all that together with my pork and I let it sit overnight right so it's gonna sit overnight and now we're gonna move to the second step which is the braising process so for this dish we're gonna take the pork that I have seasoned up and we're gonna cook it on the stove till it's nice and tender. All right, so this is my pork. I have, you can see some scotch bonnet peppers. All right, I have the pork belly. And before you even season it, you make sure. So pork for us is one of those types of meats that can be, um, have a smell to it. So you make sure you wash your pork with salt and lemon juice really well, and you let it soak. Then you rinse it, cut it up, season it, leave it overnight so it can get that nice flavor, and then we're gonna braise it. So I have a pot here with just a little bit of water that I'm going to add the pork to. And I'm gonna cover that up and let that cook. The pork is gonna cook till it's nice and tender. Then we're gonna take it out and put it on a cooling rack. Let all of the liquid drain from it and let it air dry before we fry it. So I'll go through those steps with you, but stay tuned. So this is the pork, which is still cooking. It's been about 35 minutes now. It's almost there. So I'm gonna check back on this in another 15 minutes or so and see if it's nice and tender. Okay, folks, so my pork has been cooking for about 45 minutes now and it's nice and tender. So I'm just gonna take this off, all right? Okay, folks, so once our pork has cooked and it's nice and tender, which I checked it to make sure, I'm gonna take it and put it in a cooling rack. This step is extremely important because as you know, um, pork shoulder and pork belly has a lot of fat. Also, we have it in liquid. So we wanna make sure this kind of drains really well and almost air dry um, for a bit to ensure that as much moisture as possible can be drained out. So that way, when we start frying, it doesn't completely, one, um, as soon as you put it in, splatter up and you can get burned pretty badly. Or two, it drops the temperature of the oil and causes the pork to almost simmer in the oil versus fry, which will change the texture from giving you either a nice crispy pork or a very soggy um, oil absorbed pork, which is what we don't want. All right, so we're definitely gonna let this pork sit for a while um, and just kind of air dry on its own. And then we're gonna start frying. So this is a very important step. If you don't have a cooling rack, you could just place your pork um, on paper towels and then pat them dry 
as you keep checking them and turning them and patting them. And this should, this might take you, um, I would say at least, you know, an hour or so because you really want to get um, all that moisture out your pork to make sure um, you don't get burned and your pork is nice and crispy. So a little patience here will yield the best benefits at the end, okay? So let's see. Okay, folks, so we have our pork that's been drained and left to air dry. Now we're going to start frying it. And like I said, I'm doing this outside because it's a little bit easier because this will splatter up. And it makes the frying a lot faster and easier. So I'm braving the cold out here to show you guys how to do this. It is April and there's snow on the ground and it's cold outside. And this does not take long at all. That's what we're looking for. That's our finished product. So that's our pork griot. All right. 